to turn off your cell phones. <clears throat> the agenda for the school board meeting is published and available at least one week prior to the school board meeting. Also, one week prior to the meeting, members of the public have the opportunity to correspond with board members with those communications becoming part of the official record. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on an agenda item will have an opportunity to do so prior to final action being taken. Please fill out a speaker request card available in the lobby. During the public comment portion of the meeting, names will be called as they re are received. Any member of the public wishing to speak to a non agenda item on matters relevant to the school district will have an opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting. Please fill out speaker request card available in the lobby and names will be called in the order they are received. We welcome members of the public to attend our meeting and we respect the public's right to speak to the board. We will not tolerate behavior that disrupts the orderly conduct of this meeting, including yelling or speaking over others. Our civility policy is in effect. Our vision statement, all our students achieve success in college, career, and life. The thought for the day is by Mrs. Harding. Yes, last week I had the opportunity to attend the Florida School Board Association Summer Conference. And while, I, while the new president was being inducted, he shared this amazing story with us about a U.S. Navy captain and POW, Charles Plum. And I'd like to share it with you today. Captain Plum was a Navy aviator jet pilot in Vietnam. And after 75 combat missions, his plane was destroyed by a surface-to-air missile. Plum ejected and parachuted into enemy's hands. He was captured and spent six years at a Vietnamese prison nicknamed the Hanoi Hilton. Fortunately, Plum was liberated from the camp and returned to the States to begin a new life. One day years later, he and his wife were sitting in a restaurant when a man at another table came up to him and said, You're Plum! You flew jet fighters in Vietnam from the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. You were shot down. How in the world did you know that? asked Plum. I packed your parachute, the man replied. Plum gasped in surprise, and the man shook Plum's hand and said, I guess it worked. Plum assured him, I sure did. If your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. Plum couldn't sleep that night thinking about the man. How many times had he unknowingly passed him by when they both had served in the Navy? Had he ever said to that man, good morning, or how are you? Plum thought of the man, the hours that the sailor had spent at the long wooden table in the bowels of the ship, carefully weaving the cords and folding the silks of each shoot, holding his, in his hands the fate of someone he didn't even know. Like that sailor, we in education offer labor and obscurity, packing parachutes so students can successfully complete their missions when things get critical. Teachers are parachute packers. Parents are parachute packers. Community members are parachute packers. We, as education representatives for students, families, educators, communities, our state, and for our nation, we are charged with one of the greatest responsibilities, providing a high quality education to our student. As such, we also serve as parachute packers. Let us never forget our why. All right, stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to announce that all school board members are present. I now would also like to ask for a moment of silence for the family of Logan Yumura, student at Sampine Elementary School. Thank you. I, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June 7th. So moved. Second. Okay, first Crumley, second Harding, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now we go to a special presentation, and I'm going to call up Betsy Kuhn, please, Mrs. Kuhn. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Fox to come to the podium. We have a recognition of two of our maintenance employees, longtime employees who are retiring, Mr. Eugene Scott with 35 years and Mr. Don Torch with 25, and I'd like for Mark to share a few words. Thank you very much. Thank Good you, Good evening, Mr. board Fox. members. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, board members, I just want to say thank you for giving me a few moments to recognize a few guys that's standing behind me 
who together have 60 years of service with the district. Um, both of them put together have some big jobs and big shoes to fill. They're going to be leaving us at the end of the month. So I ask for, and Betsy asked for, me to come, which I'm never here. I don't usually do this, so uh, it's okay. I'll be all right. No. No, well, we're not used to seeing you in a suit. I will say that. <laughs> yes. Ma Madam Chair, I've heard that about 10 times so far tonight. <laughs> I've been here 28 years, and I've had more people ask me, who are you? So I think, I think that's good. So first, I want to recognize Don Torge. And, and Don, Don moved from Florida to Long Island and worked for Sound Advice in 1997. In 1997, he came to work for the Pasco County School Board in the Technology Services Department. Uh, in 1999, uh, he, was, he started in the Maintenance and Facility Services Department in the Electronics Department as a Maintenance 1A. In 2000, he was promoted to Assistant Crew Chief under David Beals. In 2008, he was promoted to the Contract Coordinator working on fire alarms. And in 2012, he was promoted to the Electronics Crew Chief. Don's work is about keeping kids safe. So for all this time that he's been with us, he's been working on fire alarms, intrusion alarms, um, and, and that sort of stuff. And one of the things that he was most responsible for just recently was installing video doorbells in every single campus that locked the doors and had to be open from within inside. Uh, he's, he's accompanied tonight with his, by his wife, Carolyn. Um, so, Madam Chair and Board Members and Superintendent Staff, I would like to recognize at this time this man for 25 years of service in the Maintenance Department, Mr. Don Torch. Thank you, Don, for all you do for the students and staff of, of this district. Next is a, a gentleman that's standing off to my right here, probably leaning over my shoulder looking at me. <laughs> Eugene has been around a long time, and, and a lot of you know his face. Um, but he started with Pasco <laughs> County School Board Maintenance Department in 1987. He was in the electric shop as a maintenance 1A under then uh, crew chief Fred Amato and Bill Matum, which some of you that's been around a long time remember those two names. In 2000, he was promoted to assistant crew chief under Mike Voorhees in the electric shop. In 2013, he was promoted to the multiple trade crew chief overseeing the east side maintenance department over off Hancart Road, which basically took everything east of 41. Eugene ran that for me. In 2014, I promoted him to senior crew chief, still wondering why, because maybe he wouldn't have gone into drop so soon. But he was promoted to my senior crew chief, uh, which is second in command of maintenance. He's also the founder of the African American Club in Newport Ritchie that operates out of Booker T. Washington off of Pine Hill Road. Um, this club is responsible for many community service events, and I believe the president is here with us tonight as well, um, helping the whole, hey, yes, thank you. Thank you for your service. Help, helping the homeless, both providing food and clothing and many other Pasco County homeless families. More importantly, providing many services to Pasco County students, such as programs as after-school programs, life skill programs, uh, to all of our Pasco County students for over 31 years at that facility. Uh, countless hours spent helping students even when they wind up at JDC, he continues to work with those kids in that facility. Uh, he would uh, organize groups to travel to JDC facility just to talk to kids and let them know that someone cares uh, for them and wants to help them. He has taken numerous kids uh, to what would be their first baseball game and securing funding for student scholarships. As a matter of fact, one of the students that is, has a scholarship from this, this uh, organization is the young man that's on the elevators in the third floor playing the saxophone. So Madam Chair and Board Members, Superintendent Staff, I would like to recognize him for all he's done for the students of Pasco County for 35 years, his loyal service, Mr. Eugene Scott. I, I, I do want you to come up and shake the board members' hands, and I want to say, uh, oh, oh yes, go, go, go back to the podium and feel free. 
And, and while he's walking back, I want to say I was at the uh, ribbon cutting for the, the new remodeled building there on, uh, on Pine Road, and it looks amazing. I don't know if you had anything to do with the construction. Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> but that, that building turned out wonderful. It's, you know, um, you're giving me all those accolades, but I also would like to thank my boss, Mark Fox, for Aww. you guys don't know. He volunteers, he donates he money, does. he's helped kids. So at this time, our president will tell you a little bit about Mr. Fox. Oh. So, so thank you. If, 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 you know, if you know Eugene, Eugene is not the one who wants to give the spotlight to himself. He always wants to turn the spotlight to someone else. So he came to me and said, and I'm, I'm sorry, my name is Ephraim Livingston. I'm the president of African American Club of Pasco County, um, like, like Mr. Fox said. Mr. Fox has been a unwavering and constant uh, help to the African American Club of Pasco County. I know his relationship with, with Eugene is special, and he uses that, used that special relationship to help us out. You know, when we have our fundraisers, he's there. I don't, I don't know if you ever had him his barbecue, but if you haven't, you, you're missing a treat. <laughs> so he brings his barbecue pit, this giant pit, up to our, to, our, um, to our facility, our clubhouse, and he helps, he cooks out for us, helping us with our fundraisers. So, you know, it was my honor when Eugene asked me to, to come and talk a little bit about Mr. Fox. So, but I, I say Mr. Fox because it's personal. I, I call him Mark when I see him. So, but Mr. Fox has done a, a great, great deal for our for our club. So I just want to publicly thank him, um, thank Eugene, and thank the board for, for the things that y'all have done for our club. As they said, our normal um, place that we have our meetings is the old historical um, Booker T. Washington uh, Schoolhouse on 6105 Pine Hill Road. So if you ever want to come out, and I, and I, I, I made an opportunity to um, ask um, the chairwoman to come out. Um, we, we're gonna meet, we meet on Saturday, the first Saturday of every month, except for the summer months. We'll start back up in September. So come out, enjoy us, see all the good things that you've heard us talk about. But for Mark Fox, you know, we have a plaque for you. Would you please come up? So I know people stood up, but I just want to make sure that some, some of our some of the members from the African American Club have come out to support um, Eugene and support Mr. Fox. So if y'all can stand up, please. The members of the African American Club are here. Thank you. So the plaque says the African American Club of Pasco County Award of Appreciation presented to Mark Fox in grateful appreciation for your unwavering support and good contributions to our mission, vision, and events presented on this day, June 21st, 2022. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now, if both uh, Eugene and Mark, if both of you will come up, we'd like to shake both of your hands. take a short recess to take a photo and then we'll be right back.
Don't make me have to use the gavel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Ed. Uh, I guess. All right. Uh, now is the time to ask uh, if there's any off-agenda items. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, there are two off-agenda items uh, that are being brought forth by staff for the board's uh, consideration this evening. Um, the first would be item 16.4. Uh, and it is the Penny for Pasco Interlocal Agreement. Um, the second off-agenda item that we're asking the board to consider would be item 16.5, uh, and it is a school field trip uh, for River Ridge High School. Um, both of these items are being brought as off-agenda due to timing. Um, they were prepared after the board agenda was published, uh, but due to time considerations, we're asking the board to approve them now because there's not going to be another meeting until the 19th of July. Okay, I would need a motion for to add 16.4 and 16.5. Move to approve. Second. Okay, first Cromley, second Altman. So we will address those when they come up. Need to vote. We need to uh, vote. Yes, we do need to <laughs> vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Right for uh, public comment on uh, agenda items, there are none. There was uh, one. Let's talk. But it didn't really deal with the agenda item, I don't believe. But there was one let's no, let's talk uh, yeah. comment that would will go in public record. Um, so that brings us to United School Employees of Pasco, Pasco. Pasco Schools. <laughs> yes, and Don Peace. Thank you. I'm I'm glad that. Um, Attorney Alfonso makes this easy for me when you guys transition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Attorney Alfonso, uh, Chair Armstrong, honorable board members and district staff, good evening. I hope you're all doing well. Let me start off tonight by referring back to some comments I made at the last board meeting. I was speaking about changing the perceived culture in the district, specifically as it pertained to the progress monitoring. Perhaps my comments were taken as criticism. If that was the case, I apologize as that was not my intent. My purpose in that expose was to point out that we have a limited amount of time to make some course corrections in employee perception as pointed out in the most recent Gallup poll. Some fixes are small and easily taken care of, while others, such as the PMP, may take longer and need more work. My intent was to state that due to the tremendous workload employees have found themselves in over the last two and a half years, the beginning of this next school year must look different. Compassion, respect, and dignity must rise to the forefront in employee dealings. If we are to retain highly qualified employees, thought and foresight must be preeminent in the rolling out of this 22-23 school year. Clarity in expectations and processes should be the norm. Teamwork and unity should be a priority at all work sites as well as, district, as, well as with district staff and USEP. I know I have been accused of being stubborn in the past, hard to believe, but hopefully for the right reasons. While it may not always come out as such, my intent has always been to lift up the employees and the students of Pasco County and make this the best district in the state for public education. Toward that end, I will attempt to live up to my aforementioned expectations. USEP and the district negotiating teams are scheduled to return to the table uh, to begin the 22-23 contract bargaining next week. We are hopeful to address the compression that has taken place on the instructional side in salaries, as well as discussing moving SRP to the $15 hour threshold. It is our goal to put permanent salary increases into employee pockets as soon as possible. Tomorrow, USEP is conducting our candidate screening for school board candidates with our political action group, Tiger Pride. Among those scheduled are the two incumbents seeking re-election, Mrs. Armstrong and Mrs. Harding, and also in the audience, James Washington. We look forward to uh, this process. USEP has also been working hard to communicate with the public about the ballot initiative, 
as we endeavor to have a secondary means of providing for permanent employee salary improvements. Getting this referendum passed could very well be one of the biggest and most fruitful events in recent Pasco County history. We have a schedule of events taking place over the summer, working towards that goal. This would be a huge step for the district in recruitment of new employees and also for rewarding those loyal to Pasco over the years. Looking forward, it is our collective hope that the 22-23 school year gets off to a terrific start. We've been expecting a return to normalcy for quite some time. Let's all hope this is the year. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. All right, that will bring us to uh, Mr. Shibley. Uh, oh, well, I flipped too soon. I did. I'm so <laughs> sorry. All right, committee reports. Uh, Madam Chair, I had two since we last met, a preferred insurance uh, risk management meeting. Um, I'll probably just defer those comments until we get to consent agenda. I'm going to make a comment about our builder's risk, and I'll just include those together. And then this past Friday, we had our organizational meeting of the Value Adjustment Board for Pasco County approved all the rules and procedures and magistrates and stuff, and really no changes for anything in the past other than some legislative changes as it applies to Homestead, which uh, don't impact us too much. Right, Mrs. Cromley? Sure, as I mentioned in the workshop earlier, we had a community engagement uh, task force meeting, and committee meeting, and I think it was our best one yet because we finally got to meet in person, and it uh, brought together a lot of the work, as you saw in the workshop. I'm not gonna reiterate all that. It was spelled out very nicely by Mrs. Hilton, but we are at the stage now where we are putting uh, things into action and they will be implemented and there is a calendar for that. So you will be seeing all that and that's all I have. Thank you. I had no committees meet. Okay. Um, so I serve on the Florida School Board Association Board of Directors and so is this okay the time for me to explain sure. it? Okay. So um, I attended the, like I mentioned earlier, the Florida School Board Association annual summer conference. It was a great conference full of learning, um, but there was also an FSBA Board of Directors meeting where we talked about the Florida Department um, of Education updates from the session and our executive director's evaluation, which I'm happy to say she rocked as always, and you can um, always find that on board docs um, for FSBA. We also had an update from uh, Beth Slow, which is from St. John's County, where she told us she's our, um, FSBA representative for our new consortium for the national school, um, the national consortium, which FSBA is now a founding member of. So she um, talked about what they did at their first meeting, um, and I'm just so thankful for her leadership. We're really, really blessed um, to have her there. Um, we also swore in our new officers for next year, including our new president, Pre uh, President Thomas Kennedy from Citrus County. And I was honored to be asked to serve as the vice chair for the finance committee as well. So I look forward to keeping you all apprised of any updates as I get from them. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Can you just reiterate um, the part that you said? I know you've said it before yes. about so, um, the consortium. Yes. So, um, yes. So, um, FSBA um, no longer is a part of the National School Board Association. We um, cut ties with them, um, as, as well as a lot of other states in, um, in the U.S. And so, they de we decided to come together and create um, a national consortium. Um, and we are considered one of the founding members of them. So um, we do have our representative, um, Ms. Lowe, she serves on there representing um, the Florida, um, but as it's still forming, so as I get information, which we get a lot of updates, I will definitely share that with you guys. But yes, we are no longer part of that NSBA. Thank you. We knew that, yes. and I know we've mentioned no, it's it, good but to I think it's good for mm -hmm. the last time, no. there was a yep. lot of controversy with that. Yes, there Thank was. You. And that's yes. why we left. Yes. <laughs> right, and I had uh, no committee report. I do have one on Thursday. Now that will bring us to Mr. Shibley, who is standing in as Mr. Browning and Mr. Gadd and Mr. Shibley, all rolled into one. <laughs> <laughs> 
yes. And I don't have uh, much for the board this evening. There is an addendum to item 11.1 .1 that was uploaded to board docs. Um, I did, since we are talking about retirements, did need to make uh, one note to the board because it was pointed out um, by several of you that Denise Jaynes is in the board packet as a resignation after 34 years, is actually a retirement after 34 years. Um, so that will be corrected in the packet next board meeting. So we just wanted to make sure that that was corrected for the record. Um, there is also uh, a replacement slash addendum to the ARM portion uh, of uh, item 12.6, uh, which is purchasing. Um, and there are two modifications to that item. Um, the first, we have pulled um, the Gallup expenditure um, from that for further evaluation. And so uh, we will let the board know when that item, uh, if and when that item um, does return to the agenda. Uh, in addition, uh, Ms. Hilton and Dr. Jones made some amendments to the NWEA uh, to correct the description and to lower the cost um, associated with that particular item. So those okay. are the two changes uh, on item 12.6. Is it, is it, a is it, I'm sorry, is it, um, is it fixed in board docs or we're just saying it out loud to fix uh, it? There is actually a uh, replaced item on the dais. Um, oh, a replaced I chart. missed that. So I have, oh, here it is. I apologize. You're sorry. fine. Nope, you're okay. Like and um, if it's not uploaded into board docs after the meeting, we will get we'll it into board it. docs. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I apologize. I missed nope, that. Nope, you're welcome. Oh, wait, a, what, this one right here. wait a minute. I'm yeah. It's this one right here because yeah. I've got another one here. Yeah. It was stuck behind the opportunity now. Yeah, it's basically pulling yeah, okay. the, the gallop nice. for yeah, further I consideration so. and also correcting um, the, the initials, uh, the NWEA. No, I already looked at it. You have it. Okay. Yeah, because I had printed one before. Okay. okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. You are welcome. And that is all I have this evening, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, That's Mrs. Good, Coon. Good evening. I also have a, substit or a substitution to uh, item 12.1, and that's the construction builder's risk policy for the new construction project at Gulf High School. And um, we just ask that um, you would have a, a, a revision on your um, dais for consideration. It's the final paragraph would change from being the initial amount of 256000 to 240284 dollars. So that is a reduction um, in that builder's risk policy for your consideration, please. Thank you. Always love to save money. That's right. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Dr. Moore. Good evening, board members. We want to start off tonight with a recommendation for our new AP at Centennial Elementary School. So, Mario Pino, would you please stand up, Mario? Thank you. So, Mario joined the Army. He's part of my Army family, HUA right after high school. After serving, he used his GI Bill to pursue a degree in elementary education at St. Pete College. He began teaching in 2008. He taught for nine years at Veterans Elementary and also obtained his ed leadership from St. Leo University. In 2017, he became a math coach at Centennial Elementary School. Mario understands the importance of supporting teachers and building strong relationships with families. He is a favorite at Centennial and is expected to continue <laughs> continuing to support students, staff, and families as the assistant principal. Mario's wife, Wendy, teaches at Sanders Memorial Elementary, keeping that steam in the family. He has three children, Brady, who will enter ninth grade at Cypress Creek High School. Preston will be in fourth grade at Centennial Elementary School, and Sienna, who is three years old. So uh, can we have Mario's family stand up? And he is also being joined by his wonderful principal, uh, Ms. Dr. Gretchen Aww. Rudolph. So we're very excited to have Mario join our administrative team. Congratulations. Welcome. So I also want to share a few highlights from our Career Technical and Adult <coughs> Education, which hosted the 2022 Educators in the Workplace event um, last week. And this um, is reviving the tradition that we had in PASCO in 2021. There were 25 PASCO County School counselors, career specialists, and classroom teachers who participated. They visited many industry partner sites throughout our area during the three-day workshop. The purpose is to offer educators experiences, 
necessary for them to develop an understanding of diverse career options, workplace competencies, and labor market trends in the real world settings, and to share that knowledge with our students. So some of the partners that they visited with was our HCA Trinity Hospital, Pasco County Sheriff's, Department of Correction, Pasco County Fire and Rescue, Hilton Garden Inn, Medfleet, the, Con the Construction Institute, Iron Workers, Local and U.S. Plumbers and Pipe Fitters, Pasco County Water Treatment, East Pasco Entrepreneur Center, uh, Pasco EDC Smart Start Incubator, and Pharma Work. So I want to thank uh, Program Specialist Jen Batchelor, who you heard from earlier today during the workshop, for coordinating this event. And of course, we look to continue hosting our educators in the workplace for many years. Want to also let you know that the 94th Annual Florida FFA Convention um, and we, uh, has been take, took place and we had chapters from Zephyr Hills, Hudson, Wesley Chapel, and Land Lakes High School, Thomas E. Waitman, West Pasco Education Academy, and Pine View Middle School attend the Florida FFA State Convention in Orlando last week. They joined more than 4,000 other FFA students and sponsors. The program coordinator, Pam Willoughby, and the Wesley Chapel High School assistant principal, Stephanie Baldwin Coastland, attended several of the events, including the final general session and the statewide principal's professional development day, which was hosted by the University of Florida. Wanted to share also that we hosted in our district an Adobe professional development course. So we had 12 teachers attend the three-day Adobe PD boot camp facilitated by our career technical and adult education uh, department. The teachers had two tracks, visual design and video design, and they spent that time at Ransmussen uh, College, which was uh, the hosting site for us. Uh, several of our STEAM and STEM schools held retreats over the last two weeks focused on STEAM and STEM integration and screaming their theme across their contents. So I want to give a very special thank you to the great teachers and leaders at Marlowe Elementary School, Centennial Elementary School, Bayonet Point Middle School, and Centennial Middle School. And last but not least, we are so proud of our 2021-2022 Pasco Outstanding Senior from Wesley Chapel High School, Lana Guzman who was selected as a state officer candidate after two days of interviews and screening in March. Although she was not elected to serve this coming year, Lana's recognition is a testament to the level of excellence she has achieved in FFA. So we want to wish her the best as she begins college this fall. And as always, we are preparing today for tomorrow's workforce. Thank you so much. All right, Mrs. Taylor. Good evening. I just wanted to point out we had 13.6 on the agenda for the resolution to authorize the issuance of the COPS 2022A. We do have Laura Howe here from PFM Financial Advisors if you had any further questions. Thank you. Mrs. Hilton. Good evening. Um, I had the opportunity really to spend some time with you earlier to share district updates around Strive for 25, in particular um, early literacy, access and opportunity, community engagement, uh, leadership development, as well as those awesome assessment updates that I think um, you got the, the gist three of. Times, three times. Three times. Three times, not one. Um, and so I'm not going to rehash those things, and we spent a great deal of time together along with staff um, going through those tactics and metrics. I do want to say a big thank you to teachers and leaders who um, have, who, you know, the public might believe have um, a summer off, um, but instead are deeply engaged in professional learning, professional development, extended school year services, camps, programs, all of those things this summer, from grading from the inside out to the coaching academy. We have state literacy and math institutes going on. Numerous is not the right word, many, many, many school-based retreats um, that are also happening uh, across our district and school. Um, and district uh, school leaders, teachers, as well as district leaders are engaged in this professional learning and really um, <coughs> dedicating their time to, be, to making um, PASCO better each and every day. 
Lastly, I'd like to take a moment to recognize someone who's not expecting this, and it's Miss Janine Welch. Oh. I hope you have your speech ready. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it is, uh, it's not um, everything that we did for others, but I do want to recognize that today, or this evening, will be Janine's last board meeting. She will be retiring. Um, when asked about Janine, she's described as an unbelievably unselfish, amazing leader for her entire career, not all of which she's been in PASCO. Um, you, you might recognize her as the face of COVID, but she's done much, much, much more than that, and that is not all she should be known for as she um, retires from Pasco County. So just a big thank you to Janine. She's not expecting that. Thank you so much and enjoy. All right, Mr. Barker. Hello, tonight I get the opportunity to welcome Matt Testoni back to Pasco County Schools. Matt, you wanna stand up? Um, Matt is being uh, recommended to the board as the AP at Odessa Elementary School. Matt is entering his 21st year in education and seventh as a site-based leader. And we'd like to congratulate Matt. I know that Mrs. Hoskins and Ms. Roland are thrilled that you're joining their Wildcat team out at Odessa Elementary School. So thank you and congratulations. And Matt, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of your guest, but could you stand up and um, announce who that is for us? Awesome. Thank you for being here. Dr. Isles. Good evening. I would like to ask Mr. Rick Mellon, principal of Land Lakes High School, to come up to address board item 16.2. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Isles. Honorable school board members, superintendent staff, the board attorney, it is a pleasure to be with you at this evening's meeting. I'm here tonight to speak with you about the dedication of the gym at Land Lakes High School in honor of Coach Dave Paholsky. He's here with his wife, Erica, daughter, Kenzie, and son Dee Dee, and I just wanted to mention both of them are alumni of Land Lakes High School. And as you can tell from the applause, many of his supporters are also here with us tonight. My letter included in the board agenda states the reasons why we believe this honor is warranted. For just over 30 years, Coach Paholsky served as the head coach of the boys basketball team, winning nearly 500 games, earning six conference and six district championships, and taking 15 teams to the playoffs. Very few, if any, coaches ever reach that level of success. But more important than the accomplishments on the court were the strong relationships built along the way as a well-respected mentor and educator at the school during that same time. Coach Paholsky taught thousands of students and had a remarkable influence on everyone. In a Tampa Bay Times article about Coach Paholsky published in February 2020, it stated his hope was for the program to continue standing solidly on the foundation that he built, a foundation full of heart and soul. In recognition of Coach Paholsky's successes and devout allegiance to the school's athletes and programs and the community in which he served for over three decades, we are requesting that the school's gym be named the Dave Paholsky Gymnasium at Land Lakes High School. It certainly has a solid foundation because of his body of work, his name displayed will serve as a stronger reminder of the person that relentlessly gave his heart and soul. Thank you for attending to my request. At this time, I'm gonna ask Assistant Principal Heather Wall uh, to come up to the podium and share some comments specifically about uh, the school community. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as a member of the Land Lakes community for more than 20 years, and now in my role as assistant principal of Land Lakes High School, I've had the privilege of knowing or working with Coach Paholsky for quite a few years. My husband and many of his friends all played high school basketball for Coach Paholsky when they attended Land Lakes High School. I have heard endless recounts of big games 
as well as stories and pranks that are only fit for locker room conversations. <laughs> what they remember the most are the life lessons that were gained from being a part of his program. I have seen pictures of Coach Paholsky speaking at former players' weddings and know that several years ago he had the honor to speak at a funeral for one of his former players, Dave Starkey. Clearly, he has been asked to carry this role because of the difference he has made in the lives of all of his players. When I joined the staff at Linda Lakes High School in 2018, I was able to get to know Coach P on my own. I quickly saw the positive impact he made on so many of the students on our campus, both those who played for him and for some who were just in his PE classes. He quickly became a mentor and role model for my son as well, and still goes out of his way to support and ask about Brantley. When you talk to people who live in our community and they find out that you work at the high school, they're always quick to ask about several of our past coaches. Most people either played soccer for Coach King, football for Coach Benedetto, baseball for Coach Baisley, or basketball for Coach Paholsky. As a school, we've already named our soccer, baseball, and football fields after the respective coaches mentioned above, and we would be remiss if we did not honor Coach Paholsky with naming the gym after his 32-year commitment to Land Lakes High School. I know I speak for many, many community members and former players when I say he is so deserving of this honor. Thank you for considering this request this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do hope people will s stay just a little bit longer because that will be agenda item 16.2 uh, and I'd love to have you here when we actually vote on it. Coach Paholsky, would you like to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> if I would say it, what I really want to say we'd be here a long time tonight but I would just like to thank the board for this opportunity um, and all my friends former players assistant coaches especially my wife who was there for 32 years and my children and uh, I'll keep it that brief because like I said we'd be here till the lights were off so <laughs> thank you Sal. thank you Also in this evening's board packet, there's a recommendation to appoint Travis DeWalt as principal at West Pasco Education Academy. Travis is a product of Pasco County. He graduated from Gulf High School. He has worked with Pasco County for 23 years. He began his career, Travis, if you can stand up. <laughs> he began his career as an ELA teacher and helped support ELA initiatives as a leader. He has experiences as a coach and as an athletic director. He later became an assistant principal at Gulf High School and later 5A High School. As a leader in Pasco, he has shown the ability to help at-risk students succeed. He has taken on any challenges given to him and he has been integral in the state work at 5A High School. This has included providing regular feedback and coaching to teachers, setting up systems for monitoring students, who are struggling and encouraging staff to focus on students and their achievement data. He is passionate, driven, and focused on what is right for students. Travis is here supported tonight by his family. Please stand. With him tonight is his wife, Diane, his son, Robert, and his daughter, Lanny. Also here supporting Travis is his mentor, uh, Principal Jason Jones, if you could please stand also. So we're excited about bringing him to you tonight. Congratulations. All right. All right. There are no expulsion recommendations. So that brings us to the consent agenda. I would need a motion uh, to um, Approve the consent agenda along with all addenda that was placed on our desk, including the uh, updated 12.6. I, I have something to pull. And 11.1. Oh, oh, okay. I have 10.1 and 12.7. Okay, pull 10.1. 10 and what was the other one? 12.7. Okay, 10.1 and 12.7. Okay. I was going to pull 12.7, so I'm glad you pulled All right, are there any other? Oh, I thought you said 11. Got it. All right. So we, have, we have his agenda. That's all. Madam Chair, I'll approve uh, 
or move to approval of the consent agenda with the addendum 11-1, the amendments of 12-6, and the exception of 10-1 and 12-7. All right. Any discussion? Second. Second. Okay. Oh, second. You second. Cromley. Right. First. Okay. Altman. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. So that brings us to 10.1. The 10.1 is the uh, BJA Stop School Violence uh, Program grant. It's a competitive grant we're applying for. Um, I talked to Ms. Kuhn about it and asked her to share a little bit about what we discussed regarding this grant. Please. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Budwin. Um, this grant is something that we applied for to enhance our safety um, drills and training within the district. We um, have implemented the active threat plan since 2017 before it was legislatively required. And we're very proud of that with help from the sheriff's office and our municipal police departments. And we have been working on, um, really working on drilling since then. And what we're looking for with this grant is to add some additional training staff to help us to take our drills and our safety practices, particularly around reunification as well, since that is now a, a new state mandate, to, uh, to another level. And so we have applied for this grant to get some additional funding to support our crisis go efforts um, to, with compliance with Alyssa's law, and then also to enhance our training with crisis go and all of our safety measures and um, drills. Thank you, Thanks. Mrs. Kuhn. I also wanted to thank Chief Bellmeister for, for working on and applying for this grant. Um, if we don't receive it, perhaps some of the, I don't, I was going to, I don't know if Ms. Houghton can ask this because this might be, but it, perhaps some of the training could come from Title II funds since Title II is, includes professional development. Can those be used in the area of training with security or does it have to be for teachers and leaders? Or do you, you can get back to me if you don't. Yep. Title II is for teachers and leaders teachers. and only certain teachers as well. We can't um, provide professional development for all teachers, it's just core content areas. Okay, okay, so it wouldn't, but hopefully we get this or if we don't, perhaps there's gonna be some other uh, school safety and security grants. Yeah, if we, if we don't get this, we will keep doing what we're doing and, right. and keep enhancing our drilling and our practices. We've um, done a lot with reunification this past, um, this past school year, and we are planning to have some exercises even if we don't get this grant. This would just help us with some additional supports for the schools and supports for the um, safety officers in the schools to be able to implement those. Thank you. I move to approve 10.1. Uh, second. Okay, first Bodwin, second Harding. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That brings us to 12.7. I had, for 12.7, the particular uh, contract bid item, I wanted to get, I had, well, I've got some information, but I wanted to talk to talk a little bit more about it. It's the first item listed. It's for books and non-print library materials related to ancillary services. And it's out of the general fund. So I, I've been in discussion with Ms. Kuhn about this. Could you share some of this information and then I have some questions. Sure, so at the last board meeting there was um, a, a proposal to you for consideration to piggyback on a Brevard County bid to allow for us to um, purchase materials for schools because the state contract had expired. The state contract has now been temporarily extended um, by three months and so this particular item in the agenda is to allow for us to use that state contract um, has been extended for three months and it's specifically for schools to be able to purchase scholastic materials. Scholastic is used for um, the the weekly handouts that schools use. Um, some of you may be familiar with that, that each week in the elementary schools they pass out those handouts and students fill them out. Um, some Excuse of me Mrs. K I'm sorry. Can we Get, can it be quiet out in the audience, please? Okay. I'm sorry. It's very distracting for me. Like I want to be able to hear you. Sorry about that. So um, Scholastic is used for those um, weekly handouts. Some of those are a pass-through because parents pay a fee, but that doesn't happen necessarily for all parents, so sometimes those fees need to be covered by general funds for that. We also use Scholastic for book fairs. Now, again, many of those are passed through because parents are paying for the items from the book fair. There are also many other items that um, schools have used Scholastic for. One example would be um, summer reading for students in transition. That would not be from the general fund. 
Also, um, an initiative called One Book, One School, um, that is um, used, typically used with Title I funds, where an entire school will read one book together. And then additionally, as um, you heard in the district update, there are, um, for kindergarten registration, there are some books that are given during that kindergarten registration. That's a fairly new program um, that just, uh, just happened to give kindergartners those three books when they, when they enroll. And um, th that also, it, it, is, it looks like general funds, but it's a categorical. So that is, um, those are funds that are earmarked for those types of, um, those types of materials. Okay, so it, so it is a categorical. The okay. ones that you saw, um, Ms. Yeah, Mitchell which, that's show, why we made yeah, as part of kindergarten registration in K Camp, right? So okay. we used the K twelve reading categorical. That is general funds, right. though it is in that K twelve reading categorical that is meant for the um, express purpose of promoting literacy, um, and in particular, does have some um, assurances that we support early literacy. Okay, thank you. I just had some questions about it because we had the la both the last meeting and the meeting prior to that. It seemed like there were so many contracts coming through for reading materials. Yeah, this one is really only for Scholastic. If if okay. Scholastic had been part of that Brevard bid, then we, we wouldn't, wouldn't have needed this. A separate one. But because but it wasn't, it okay. wasn't, and so okay. because the state contract has Scholastic and the Brevard bid did not, we needed Scholastic for schools to be able to have those purposes. Okay. That was my question. And too. you know, there aren't specific titles connected here. It, this is just permission to use those bids, um, as I think you know, um, Ms. Kuhn already explained. And I think the other thing to note is because the state contract expired, you're seeing these uh, band aids, if you will, these different things that we would not normally um, have to engage in, but for the state contract okay. issue. Okay. Thank you. Did you have any more? Yeah, I just, Ms. Kuhn, I. I I didn't really ask you this before, so if you don't know the mm -hmm. complete answer, but I just saw on here um, SLA management. Mm -hmm, I can explain um, that one. Okay, I know that, well, I'm, I serve on the charter school, so is this, that's the the management people we use for charter schools, correct? Yes, yeah, so they okay. they provide meals for our charter schools. Yes. We pay them for that, and then we receive reimbursement. That's what I was going to clarify. Okay, that's it. Okay. That's all. Okay. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, then I, I move uh, to approve. 12.7. Second. Second. Okay. okay. Sorry, Ms. <laughs> First, um, Bodwin. Second, um, Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chair, before you move on, I didn't yes. want to pull it, but just you all saw the information 12.1 that was different. Um, I just wanted to note, since I didn't cover it under my committee report, that this is builder's risk coverage for Gulf High School. Previously in the history of this district, we have used one carrier that's been able to provide the coverage just as a, uh, another sign of what's going on in the Florida market. If you look, that's seven different carriers to cobble together enough coverage for the builder's mm -hmm. risk. Wow. There for the new and construction and everything? Yes. Wow. So it'll be construction. Uh, <laughs> coverage during construction and then it'll go on our regular policy and uh, just as a point of reference the district is assuming more risk I just wanted you all to know our regular uh, wind deductible has been three percent the best that we could get was five percent on this so we're assuming more risk um, and had to get seven different carriers through four different brokers uh, in order to get the coverage put together so I didn't want to belabored the point but since we are we just voted on the insurance package and this one we're assuming a little bit more risk yeah. because of the higher wind deductible I want to make sure you, everybody knew about you that. You said five percent seven different carriers and what did you say about this last four part? some four blah. well we, we, it ended up Sorry, seven, seven carriers through four different brokers, brokers. But if, there's okay. a, if you look in there you'll see a list I think it's in here it was in all the material I looked at but uh, of all the different uh, Carriers that mm -hmm. it was sent out to be quoted on, okay. yeah. but so, it was. Yeah, so everybody wanted to bunch. spread the risk out. Nobody wanted to take, take that it. much risk by yeah. themselves. Uh, can so. I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. You may not know, <laughs> but um, since that's our school right there, farthest west, and but also we have Anclote High. Is it a similar situation no. at Anclote High? Anclote's you know? already completed, and it's included in the other. Uh, okay, the existing so that's package. because this is brand new. Builders' risk are, are written separately. Okay. And then we get coverage, uh, at least currently, when that is completed, we don't pay premium on it until it gets picked up at the next policy renewal period. 
the issue with Anclote is that it's on the west side of 19th exactly. in a flood zone. Exactly, that's and why so I was we wondering. Get flood insurance on yeah. that one too. So yeah, that's what I was anyway. wondering. Okay. Right. Yes. No, to add, to add to what you said, Mr. Altman, I know Mr. Goody was very concerned with the price, and so they went back and tried to figure out ways to bring that down because it, it is you know a lot of money for for one of, one of these policies, but it did take some work to get there, and it did um, it, it did result in having a different deductible, and then also having the three percent to five percent. All right, thank you so well, much for, yeah. for that explanation. All right, that brings us to action items. If I can get to the right page here. All right, action item 16.1, day spring contract for Angeline. Move approval. Second. Okay, first Altman, second Crumley, any discussion? I got all my questions answered. Me too. Here. Okay, Same all here. right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16.2. Well, I feel bad because I asked people to just be a little quieter so I could hear Ms. Kuhn, and now that whole group left. You ran them yes. out. I yes. I feel really bad because they ran them out. out. <laughs> well, so, are they still, are they still out, out there? there? Pause the vote. No. Oh. No. Oh. no. Uh, okay. You can yell at them. So, <laughs> Well, well uh, I will make the motion to approve. Second. Um, oh, I'm going to read it into it because it was a big deal and our whole community was here. I just wanted to hear her. I, did. I think I messed that up because Rick said, did they approve it when you said the consent agenda? I didn't realize it was on a separate one. That was my fault. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't because of oh, what you said. Oh, it wasn't said. because we haven't no, it No. It, and and they're going out the celebrating. Thing, so. I am certain of that. Okay. So, oh, wait. yes. Well, well, it, 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 it's, it's, yeah. Oh, well, well, that's it, okay. They want to. Okay, well just tell them, yeah, tell tell them Colleen is making the motion as their district representative, yeah. okay? Maybe give them a second. Maybe give them a second. Okay. Aww. Aww. <laughs> All right, well, it we can be go on. to, um, go to the next one. Yeah, Let's, and we'll come back. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll skip that, see if yeah, they want to come to back in. <laughs> Madam Chairman, would you please? <laughs> Sorry. Madam would you Chairman, please go mind? to 16? Okay. Maybe okay. ask you. Thank you, Madam All Chairman. All right, well, we will move on Chair. to 16.3 and come back to that one to see if they'd move like approval. to come back in. Second. Okay, first Altman, second uh, Baldwin. All in favor for the student I, code of conduct. I just, I just want to say um, thank you to... Oh staff that looked at all of our concerns and I know like we had changed some things and we'd asked yes, for more we did. Um, fixing so I just wanted to thank staff for that but yes um, Please tell them all in favor <laughs> all right all in favor aye, aye. aye. Thank you. okay, okay I'm Motion glad that you came back I, said I felt bad that I asked people to be quiet <laughs> so I could hear and I thought I scared everyone off um, so I now that you're present I would like to Move to approve the dedication of the gym at Land Lakes High School and recognition of Coach Dave Pahalski's successes and devout allegiance to the school's athletic program and student athletes, as well as the Land Lakes community in which he serves. Second. Okay, first, uh, Bodwin, second. Uh, Har uh, Harding, any other comments? No, just thank, thank you. you thank, for you. Everything. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all Hi. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Motion carried and Thank congratulations. You. So yes. well deserved. Yes. 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 Aww. Aww. Oh, now we want to thank you. And so please let us know when the dedication is going to take place because we'd love to be there for that also. Right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and supporting. T. All right. Um, all right, moving on to 16.4. Move approval. All right, I got a first by Altman. Second. second. Okay, okay, second by Crumley. This is for the penny for Pasco in a local agreement. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 
16.5, the River Ridge High School Cheer Move Field to Trip. Approve. Second. Okay, first uh, Bodwin, second Harding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. um, now, at this point, we're going to be recessing the school board meeting and then adjourning the um, Pasco mm -hmm. County School Board Leasing Corporation. So, at this time, uh, I will call the Pasco County School Board Leasing Corporation meeting to order. Okay. Right. Roll call, all members are present. I need a motion to approve the minutes of our last uh, meeting of October 5th. Move to approve. Second. Okay, first Crumley, second Bodwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. New business, 3.1, resolution to authorize the cert issuance of certificates of prepar uh, participation series 2022A. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, uh, first Altman, second Crumley. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, I now I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Move. Second. Okay, first <laughs> Altman, second Harding, and we will re reconvene the school board meeting. And now that brings us to individual uh, board member reports. Be safe. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Madam Chair, just very quickly, um, I just wanted to say I uh, attended the Pasco High graduation, Zephyr Hills High and Wesley Chapel High, and the speakers were all extremely uh, appropriate. The students were well behaved, and things just went tremendous in all instances. And so I, I know that that doesn't occur without a tremendous amount of efforts behind the scenes. So. I've shared that with all of the uh, principals and APs and staff members that were there, but uh, I, was, I was really, really proud of, uh, of how our students and everybody else uh, conducted themselves and things went extremely well. Maybe right. you're invited to next year. I just do want to go and wrap oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed. <laughs> when I did, I forgot. I, I went to the penny kickoff but all y'all were there so y'all yes. didn't need to tell you and that and you did a wonderful job yeah you did that was great thank you for speaking i can talk about that i know you can in my sleep maybe you should yes. actually yeah. <laughs> yeah you've been talking about that for a couple of decades haven't you you're doing a good uh, job on that we, and we appreciate no yes. we appreciate that yeah we, we do. appreciate all your work <laughs> we do thank you. we wouldn't have all these great places to talk about and dedicate if, we, if it weren't for you, really, we wouldn't. Really. So yeah. that's yeah. part of what I want to say. Yes. <laughs> so thanks to everybody on that. And I also want to thank Mrs. or Chair Armstrong because she covered my graduations because my daughter had her baby a week early. Aww. How dare she have her during graduation uh -huh. week? <laughs> so I want to thank you personally for oh, doing that. Oh, thank I you very much. It. I really well, enjoyed it. Thank so you. It's my pleasure. Appreciate it. All I, have okay. tonight. Um, I too want to congratulate the class of 2022 and their families. I had the pleasure of attending Cypress Creek High School. It's the first time that that school has, in my, has now been moved into District 2. Uh, Wiregrass Ranch High School and Land of Lakes High School graduation ceremonies. And I want to thank all the principals, assistant principals, class counselors, class advisors, and all the teachers and staff who worked hard to make the ceremonies special for the students and families. And I wanted to thank Dr. Isle for being there for all the ceremonies. So thank you. Um, I participated in the first meeting for the five-year review for Land Lakes High School's International Baccalaureate Program. We read and discussed the previous five-year review, of which I did also served on that committee, and started preparing our preliminary review report. I'm, I'm pleased. Uh, that Land Lakes High School now offers more choices within the IB program. For example, the students now have a choice of Spanish or French for their second language. And I want to thank Mr. Yarkey, Mr. Mellon, Mr. Mrs. Del Valle. All these people were here and now left, I think. And the students, there were students and teachers, uh, you know, who came in over the summer to work on this. It's a big project, but it's very important for keeping the IB accreditation. So thank you to everyone who's working on it. And I, too, attended the Penny for Pasco kickoff and thank everyone for their work on that and the citizen group that's working on this important initiative. I also wanted to, th there's a lot of thanks there. <laughs> thank you to all our teachers and leaders who are participating in professional development this summer. 
Um, I've heard from several families who've expressed the desire to increase the pay of our teachers and school support staff because they know the positive impact good schools with high quality teachers has on the community. So thank you to everyone who is supporting the August ballot initiative to recruit, retain, and reward PESCO employees. I have said this many times, but it bears repeating. I want to ask, I know the superintendent's not here, but I know we have minutes. Uh, the superintendent and staff to please think outside the box and find ways to take things off the plates of our teachers and administrators. Um, I'm going to ask at each meeting to just keep this in the forefront of our thought and what, find out what's being done to lessen the burden on our people who are working with students every day. So please consider this in your planning because I would really appreciate your support in this area. Thank you. Um, I got to attend the CARES fundraiser a few weeks back. It was a wonderful event raising money for such a worthy cause in our community. And um, I too got to attend graduations, which is one of my most favorite things to do. Um, I got to attend Hudson High School and Five A High School. I wanted to thank all the staff and admin for being there. Um, it was always, it's always such a joy to watch our seniors graduate and to shake their hands. I'm so proud of each and every one of them and I cannot wait to see all the wonderful things that they will do. Um, I did just want to do a reminder that Pasco Pathways is open and they're open in, um, until the 24th, so if you want to put your child somewhere awesome, go ahead and check that out. And I, to attend the Penny for Pasco kickoff, um, I wanted to thank, uh, too, wanted to thank all who attended and for all of your support with that. That's it. All right, thank you. Yes, graduations were great, and I got to do some extra ones this year, so it was even better. And I have to say, it was so nice to be back, and I want to thank Mrs. Kuhn. So nice to be back in the Yingling Center in Tampa. <laughs> It could rain, and at Mitchell graduation, it's rained two years straight. It rained again this year, but it didn't matter because we were inside. <laughs> so it was, it was just uh, wonderful, so thank you. I was so glad to see we have additional years uh, agreements there. And I also really wanted to thank the teachers that volunteer their time to come out and mm -hmm. help get the students all lined up and make sure, settle their nerves. I heard one saying, Make sure you zip up your gown, straighten your, your, your tassel, just really making sure that, that they really knew what they were supposed to do and to calm their nerves. So it was really great to, to be there at all the graduations. Um, and I, I will say, uh, something was mentioned about uh, Booker T. Washington uh, School on, on Pine uh, Street, Pine Road. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce actually did a ribbon cutting there on Saturday for the, the remodel of it, which un unbeknownst to me, when I got there, they said, oh, you're representing the school board. So, uh, so I said, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, so because apparently we played a role in the remodel and it was, they were so thrilled because it's actually around the edges of the uh, class building uh, walls. They had everything set up like it was a school. They had the history of the school. They had, they had books against the wall. They actually showed me their little library where, where they're getting their books, where they're going to be doing more of those reading programs that they mentioned. So it, it turned out gorgeous, and they were so, so thrilled with it. So uh, I just wanted to mention that, and I was thanking Mark Fox, because I'm sure he had a big part of that. So. Uh, so it, I just wanted you to know that it turned out amazing and they were just thrilled and they're gonna be able to continue to provide their community services from, from a really nice looking building. So, all right, that is all for me. Anything more from the superintendent, Mr. Uh, Shibley? <laughs> Shibley? I believe we're good. <laughs> all right, anything from Attorney Alfonso? I do have one thing. I just want the record to reflect that earlier, pursuant to Florida Statute 286.011 sub 8, a shade litigation session was held to discuss pending litigation regarding Rose versus District School Board of Pasco County, Pasco County Circuit Court Case Number 51, 2021 CA 2682 Westside. We sought advice concerning the litigation and settlement negotiations or strategies related to litigation expenditures, and at the meeting, discussion was combined to those matters. My office arranged the appearance of a certified court reporter to be present, and the attendees were board members, Kevin Shibley, who was the superintendent's designee, general counsel, and Newt Nathy litigation counsel. The meeting commenced at approximately 3.15 and ended at approximately 3.26. That's it. All right, thank you. 
All right, that now uh, ends the business portion and brings us to the public uh, comment for non agended items. And uh, first up would be Sherry Butler. <laughs> 